Hello everyone. This video I want to tell you about tire temperatures and how to use the most valuable tool NASCAR Heat 4 gives you. This information is available to you in real time while you're on the track and can be captured to diagnose setup issues and to tell you if your tires are properly inflated. Tires are the most important component on a race car. You can have the fastest engine or the best possible setup, but if you don't have a set of tires between you and the track, everything else is meaningless. In fact, every single thing you adjust on a race car is for the benefit of the tires. All adjustments made are all about trying to achieve the best possible grip from the tires up to the track. If you have the best grip at all four tires, then you'll have the fastest car on the track. When I talk about the inside of each tire, I'm referring to the edge closest to the brake rotors or inside of the car. When I refer to the outside edge of each tire, I'm referring to those edges that are furthest from the brake rotors. Tires are marked within NASCAR heat as O for outside, M for middle, and I for inside. Every adjustment we attempt to make on a race car is an attempt to try to maximize the grip of each tire. By taking tire temperatures of each tire, we can read how well our chassis is performing. A good tire man can tell how a race car is handling without ever watching it perform on the track and even without talking to the driver. Tire temperatures are the only scientific proof we have that how the chassis is working. It's easy for a driver to misinterpret how a car is handling. Tire temperatures eliminate that mystery by telling us which corner of the car is over or underworked. The information I'm going to discuss below is what I've learned over the years working on real race cars. Some of the tire testing information I will mention below has given me various results within the game. Some of this information transfers over to the game rather well. Use this information to the best of your advantage to better understand the concept behind reading tire temperatures. By comparing tire temperatures across the surface of the front tires, we are able to tell if we have proper camber angles and proper weight distribution, as well as proper tire inflation. By reading the average tire temperature of the right front and comparing it to the average temperature of the right rear, we can tell if the chassis is loose or tight. Comparing diagonal averages indicate the proper amount of wedge in the chassis. The optimal tire temperatures should be in a range of 190 to 240 degrees. Keep in mind that the hotter the tire, the quicker it will wear out. It's important to realize what the outside of each tire is and the inside. The inside of each tire is the edge closest to the brake rotors or the inside of the car. The outside edge of each tire are those edges that are furthest from the brake rotors or the outside of the car. By comparing the average temperature of all four tires, you can see which corner of the chassis is working harder than the other. To figure the average temperature of a tire, add the three temps across the tire and divide that by three. If your right front is hotter than the other three tires, then you're probably pushing because the right front is doing too much work. Working on cooling that tire off by lowering the right front spring and allowing the other tires to share some of the work. Or you may need to move weight or adjust wedge. By comparing the right front average to the right rear average, you can tell if the chassis is loose or tight. The right front should be about 10 degrees hotter than the right rear. If it's higher, you're probably pushing. If it's lower, you're loose. A tire is being underworked when its temperature is a lot lower than the other three tires. When a tire is cooler or underworked, try concentrating on that corner of the car. Try adding weight to the car to increase the temperature of that tire. If a tire is a lot hotter than the other three, work on them making that one cooler. It's also informative to compare right and left side, front and rear, as well as diagonal averages. <clears throat> to see if you have the proper wedge average, the right front and left rear tires, and compare them to the front averages and two right side averages. Your diagonal average should be 5 to 10 degrees cooler than both the front and right side averages. If it is warmer, you have too much cross weight. If it's cooler, then you need to add some cross weight or wedge. The best way to decipher, decipher tire temperatures is to run 10 laps on a particular setup and monitor the temperatures. You don't expect to learn everything reading the tire temperatures only once. It will take a number of 10 lap sessions to sort everything out that's going on within the tires. When analyzing tire temperatures, it should be done in a specific order. This is because a problem in one area may mask a problem in another area area. So here's what's the best way to do. Run 10 laps, adjust your cambers. Run another 10 laps, adjust your tire PSI. Run 10 laps and adjust your wedge. Adjust for tight and loose conditions based on right front and right rear average. Run another 10 laps. Look for overheated or overworked tire and adjust that corner of the car. Run 
run 10 more laps. Repeat the process over again and run 10 more laps. When checking tire temperatures, it's important to make sure you're not locking up the brakes or making any sudden changes in your steering outputs. This will create anonymous tire temperature readings. Let me try to simplify how to read tire temperatures by giving you this guideline. A tire with too much negative camber will show an excessively high temperature at the inside edges. A tire with too much positive camber will show an excessively high temperature at the outside edges. A tire that is overinflated will have a higher middle temperature than the inside and outside edges. A tire that is underinflated will have a lower middle temperature than the inside and outside edges. A car with too much toe will show higher temperatures both inside edges of the front tires. A car with too much toe in will show higher temperatures on both outside edges of the front tires. A right front tire that is hotter by more than 10 degrees over the right rear indicates a tight condition. A right front tire that is colder by more than 10 degrees over the right rear indicates a loose condition. A tire with the highest average temperature in the corner of the car that is being most worked. A tire with the lowest average temperature is in the corner of the car is that of being least worked. A right front and left rear diagonal average that is the same or higher than the front and right side average indicates too much wedge. A right front and left rear diagonal average that is more than 10 degrees lower then the front and right side average indicates not enough wedge. Let me, let me reiterate once again that these results you see may vary. Using these guidelines will give you a better idea of what you're trying to achieve and should get you in the ballpark of a quicker, more stable setup. I've made an example here for you to look at and let me explain. We've got the left front tire temperatures, 252, 229, 216, average is 232. So on and so forth for the right front, left rear, right rear. I've also put down the percentages of these tires as the readings was taken. 93, 96, 95, 85. I went and done the averages for each tire, done the front average, the rear average, the left to right front cross average, and the right side average. Now, 0.25 psi equals about one degree in temperature. So, we can look at the left front tire here. The middle temperature is 229, the average temperature is 232. This tire is underinflated and could use a little bit of air, approximately 0.75 PSI. The right front, the average is 217, 218.16. This tire is slightly underflated. I would add one pound of air to this tire. The left rear tire, 202, 207. This tire also is underinflated by five degrees. I would add 1.25 PSI to this tire here. The right rear, 258, 248. The right rear is overinflated and is about 10 degrees hotter. So that would be, you need to lower the right rear tire temperature approximately two and a half PSI. Again, your results may vary depending on your driving style, how you're entering and exiting quarters, and your braking points. Now let's compare our front to rear averages. Front average 225, 228. That would indicate this car's a little loose, but we know that because of this right rear tire has got a lot of wear compared to the others. Let's look at our cross, 213 compared to 225 and 213 compared to 233. That would say that the cross weight is probably okay, but when you compare the wear rate from 85 to 93 and 96 to 95, you could get a little bit out of adding some wedge to this car to get the weight off the right rear, apply it to the right front to left rear, which will should equal out this wear rate and add a little bit of wear to the right front and take a little bit off the right rear. If you find that adding a lot of amounts of wedge is the only way you can get that wear rate to even out, you might benefit from moving weight back or back front. Your front to weight may be completely out of whack and adjusting the front to rate, front to back weight bias, and then adjusting your wedge, you might find that you'll get your tire wear to be more appropriate. Well, there you go, folks. That's how we use tire temperatures and then how it becomes the most valuable tool racing online and in a game. It's the only tool we got. So, hope everybody understands what I said and I hope it helps you and benefits you out on the racetrack. Good luck to everyone, and see you next time.